Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. We continue our series on St. Dominic, so our Word of the Week, St. Dominic, part not one, not two, not three, but part four. In this fourth part, we left off where St. Dominic had been basically more or less abandoned by this great mission of, of preaching in southern France and the areas of the Waldensian, the, to this day the Albi, the Albigensians, and although he had been given a kind of mandate to preach with Benedictines, uh, the kind of lifestyle and uh, the effectiveness of the preaching had not really taken purchase there in those lands. And so what did Dominic do? Today I want to talk about uh, two different aspects that led to the first kindling of God's being successful in the life and preaching of St. Dominic. The first is Dominic had this great insight that in order to shape hearts, you first have to shape culture. In other words, as individuals, we don't change our minds very often, do we? <laughs> right? We kind of know what we know, we think what we think, we do what we do, <laughs> and we do it. And yet, if we see other people doing things, we can often be impressed by that. And that can change our mind. In other words, culture shapes opinion. You just have to look at the latest polls of what people think to see what kind of cultural seeds have been planted years before, huh? Our culture isn't just individuals making decision, but are in the hands of really cultural formators that tell us what's appropriate and not appropriate. The whole politically correct movement is an example of that, unfortunately. But what St. Dominic said is, in order to speak to hearts, I've got to first help to form culture. And in order to form culture, especially from a Catholic perspective, what do we need? We need prayer. And you need to cultivate a community of prayer. Prayer and education. And here, St. Dominic looked to women. <laughs> he cultivated those who were involved in education and in prayer. And one day, as he sat upon uh, the hill there, uh, proximate to the little town in Prouy, France, he saw a shooting star blazed across the sky and stayed permanently, or at least at that time, hovering over this little homestead. And Dominic took that as a great sign, the great sign that he was to gather a group of women into a convent, into a kind of community of prayer and education. And this great sign happened on July 22nd, 1213, the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. And Dominic saw this moment of, on the Feast of Mary Magdalene as establishing, if you will, the heart of the Dominican order, that heart in prayer, that heart for education. And so he founded these first group of nuns. Before the friars came the nuns, the foundation of prayer. And so once that was ratified, this community was established, a group of prayer. And Dominic went to go back to Rome to ask the Pope that he might form a group of men whose sole mission was not to just follow him, we were going to be an order of St. Dominic, but an order that did what? Preach for the salvation of souls. He had the heartbeat, he had that sense of prayer, he had education, those formational, cultural formators, and now, and only now, a time to then sow those seeds of the gospel. The Pope was a little bit resistant to this, and then the Pope died, and the Pope passed away, and the new Pope, <laughs> Honorius IV, was very receptive to Dominic, and so he established on December 22nd, 1216, the order of preachers came to life. He said, you are to be preachers for the salvation of soul, champions of the faith to bring the light of the gospel Alive. That is our official mandate from the Pope 800 years ago and continues to be for us today. And so Dominic returned, or wanted to return, to France, but the Pope wouldn't let him. <laughs> the Pope says, I want you to be here and stay with me in Rome in order to be a kind of theologian, a spiritual advisor, and the master of the sacred palace. To this day, the Pope's intellectual advisor has been and into successive tradition history, a Dominican. <laughs> so St. Dominic was the first papal advisor 
master uh, of the Sacred Palace, and that, if you will, the Pope's theologian, known uh, kind of uh, colloquially, uh, and to this day it remains uh, a Dominican. And Dominic then was there in Rome, he was advising the Pope, he had a mandate to start this order, but he was eager to get back on the, on the road. <laughs> and he has this dream, St. Peter's, old St. Peter's Basilica, a dream in which Saints Peter and Paul come to him. St. Peter comes with a staff and gives him a his staff in order that he might walk the trails and that he might preach the gospel. And St. Paul gives him a book of his letters. And to this day, or to that day, St. Dominic, when he traveled, always traveled with his stick, <laughs> the walking stick, and with the letters of St. Paul, along with the Gospel of Matthew in his preaching. That's all he needed. And so from that moment on, he told the Pope about this dream. He said he wanted to return back to that place in southern France. He wanted to continue to build the order up to preach, and so the, the, uh, the Pope allowed him to do so. And it's from there, then, that we jump off into the next chapter of the story of St. Dominic. But it's a very formative part. St. Dominic knew that his preaching, amidst the failure of his preaching, he saw a wider vision to form culture. We, too, in our own lives, know that the culture around us won't change simply because we want it to change, but only changes when? Through prayer, through study, through actually learning more about creation or learning more about the world around us and bringing that to prayer. May our prayer life be the heartbeat of all we do so that what we do bears fruit in abundance. Amen.